Um, cheers, everyone. <laughs> cheers, everyone. I am Lady Amy. This is Captain Willemstad. <laughs> and we have Lady Nancy. Hello. <laughs> <Lady> Square. <laughs> and yeah. we are, yeah, we are here for uh, our monthly tea tasting, yes. which this month, uh, Nancy, it was her pick, her choice. So Nancy, I'll let you take it away <laughs> and yeah, explain, so explain our theme. <laughs> Um, it's summer, so I was trying to go with some, you know, it's it's berry time. It's, you know, it, I just figured some nice summer flavors would include berries. So um, I picked blackberry sage would be our first one. Mm -hmm. uh, peach rose is the second one. And the third one is cherry fig. Now I have to say, I've sent you cherry fig before, but it was under the name of Biggie Pudding. Um, uh -oh. so both good for Christmas and for summer. So that's awesome. <laughs> Always one of my favorite teas, though. It needs no, I, I mean, it's great with cream. Um, it, it just, I, I just absolutely love the, I love the smell of it more than anything else. Yeah. The flavor is incomparable. So um, I did that one last just to see because I think once I have the cherry fig, I might not like the other ones quite as much. So I put that as number three. Right. You got to try the yeah. new ones first. Yeah. <laughs> And, um, and we were, we delayed this morning or today, I should say this afternoon. Um, so yeah. my apologies that we're getting a late start on this, but that's um, okay. I anyway. feel like it, it, it works out better if we just plan for two 30 and then we'll be on closer to three. Exactly. <laughs> we just, exactly. It's our pre, our pre-production time. <laughs> it works. It works. And today I brought my gloves, but I probably won't keep them on very long. I love it. I know I, I need, I have gloves, but they are probably in my Halloween costume box. They are. <laughs> Actually, probably the color of my hair. I wore them when I was Lizzie Borden <laughs> for Halloween one year. Oh my smart. How scary. <laughs> that was really fun. <laughs> Very good. Oh my gosh. I wish gloves would come back for certain events. Yeah. I wish they would come back. I think they're elegant. I think they're fun. Right. And, and then well, you don't have to paint your nails. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Good point. <laughs> Which I actually yeah, don't. Yeah, don't look too close. Oh, yeah, good. Right. So my nails look like there's nothing on them, right? To From you? Here, but don't forget, I ain't blonde as about without some <laughs> Well, no, what I'm saying is it's like weird. They're a bright orange, but it's like showing up in- Oh my gosh, they're disappearing into your background. You actually yeah, yeah. not only look like they're not painted, you look like you just don't have the last segment of your fingers. So. Yeah, but I don't understand because it's like, it's not like it's green nail polish. It's like, I don't know, neon orange. That's very weird. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I'm going to pour the tea because unfortunately mine's been sitting here for a while and not under a tea cozy or anything. So, um, oh, okay. Yep. I'm going to get mine going before it becomes too no cool. I'll start mine as well. And I'm taking a note out of your book um, from last month. I'm using my wedding um, china. I love it. Same, That's uh, awesome. Yeah, all the same ivory color, so I can better assess. If anybody wants to see, yeah, I'm like still the virtual, I'm trying to show the tea leaves. So there's the blackberry yeah. sage. Thank you. Which I definitely smell the sage. You um, definitely smell the sage and you can see the pale green leaves in there, yeah. Yeah, it's really pretty. Um, okay, and then I'll go ahead and show all the tea leaves before That's I put fine. them in with yeah. water. <laughs> and then, so the next one is peach rose. Right. Okay. And these are all Ceylon, black Ceylon tea blend. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And so. Definitely smell the peach. Yeah. Definitely smell the peach. Yeah. There. Yes. Very good. Mm -hmm. It's got, it looks like uh, green. It looks like green tea leaves in there, but you said it's the Ceylon. Mm -hmm. There is some black Ceylon in there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then cherry fig, aka figgy pudding. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, you're right. Yeah, that does smell so good. Is this? And I have to ask: Are these pieces of fig? They are. Okay, I was like, I see big pieces. Okay, you, you should see the massive chunk I have in mine. Except I think you know what? I think my massive chunk is actually a cherry. It's a dried cherry. Oh, nice. So, um, but yes, and it comes with those pieces in it, and uh, really helps to. Enhance the flavor. Um, Amy, I do stand corrected. I don't know why I thought this one was uh, black Ceylon. It looks black where I am, but um, I think you're right. It's more of a Oh, green. it might be green. It looks Is like it? a blend of both. They're, they're, they're... Have I shown you my tea cozy before? I think you have, but show me again. Yes, you have shown me that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I was like, I only have one, and it's, <laughs> I only need one. <laughs> and where did you get that one? 
I actually got that one in England somewhere at a shop. Not nice. one of the royal shops. I probably bought it somewhere where it was not royal prices. <laughs> it smells good. Now I grow sage in my garden every summer. And I have a oh, really? huge bush of it right now. And that's, that's, I'm smelling it. And what do you do with sage? When you um, it's a great flavoring for chicken. Um, I actually have a um, recipe for uh, balsamic sage chicken that um, I make for dinner, sometimes serve it over pasta or rice. Um, okay. Trying to find other uses for it. Um, it goes well with pork too. I've done an, an urban crusted pork roast. Okay. For yeah. I was wondering if you did any cleansing of houses. <laughs> That's what I know sage for. Oh, I didn't. <laughs> Where you like roll up the whole stick of sage and you burn it and walk around the house cleansing it. Interesting. <laughs> of spirits. You know, I, oh, of spirits. Okay. Yeah, well, you don't watch like enough. You don't watch enough ghosty shows. I don't. <laughs> I don't. No. no. Well, if you've got any any spirits in the house, now you know you've got a solution. <laughs> if it would just cure my eyesight. <laughs> I would oh, rub shade right into my eyes if it would fix my eyes. And um. Oh yeah, so you're showing your teacup. So I am using ones that I have three that are the same. So I'm using, oh, can you see? It's kind of bright, but yeah, it's like kind of a mint green flower design. Beautiful. Hey, that's yeah. not the one that you and I have like the, the similar tin to, is it? That's not the Buckingham Palace. No, it's not. No, it's not. I wish it was. <laughs> I know, right? I want the red and gold one. That's the one I want. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I don't know, because they've got so many awesome designs, like on the palace shops. I'm like, can I have all of it? <laughs> yeah, one of them could be lovely. They are. They are very pretty. I remember going into the Buckingham Palace section of um, of Harrods and just. <gasps> I know. I know. I'm gonna see. Can I get this on my? Will Jose let me spend this much money? Can I? What can? What can we do here? What can? Can I get this on Amazon? I don't think so. I no. don't think <laughs> so. I'm gonna start adding sugar. I have to show. You, I don't remember if I showed you this. I think I told you. I, and like you in the past, I've got a lot of donations of things. Yeah, yeah. Now what's this, this one? Couple, this is so stinking cute, and they gave me two of them. They're Japanese, actually, and I don't know oh, how much. well you can see that. Try not. Yeah, I can that. see it. Yeah, yeah, it looks awesome. Okay. So this is the sugar and oh. this is the creamer. <gasps> That's awesome. Isn't that sweet? And that the other one so has cute. roses. This has violets on it. So I'd say it oh, looks nice. very Victorian, but it's not that old. But I would say right. it probably goes back to the 30s or 40s. Very cool. Maybe two of them in absolute mint condition. And um, they're just the cutest things. That's amazing. Not something I would take to a Girl Scout tea, but something I would do for a bridal party, <laughs> maybe. No offense, Girl Scouts. <laughs> yeah, no offense. Yeah. But that's a, yeah, that's a private collection. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. On ruined. my sugars. And yeah, I was craving something so sweet after lunch. And I was like, I really just need to hold off. because I'm going to be having tea with Amy here. Pretty oh, soon. <laughs> not just one cup, not two. That's right. Three. three. Yes. And maybe refills. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Me and I have been trying really hard um, to get back out there and become more active. So tonight will mark day seven, day eight of us going out to do something, whether it is a walk slash run, mm -hmm. um, we bike and, wow. um, and we swim. Not oh, all the same time. We do one or the other. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Do, you, do you swim at the uh, at the club or whatever where like in the neighborhood thing? pool yeah, yeah in, neighborhood in the pool, evening yeah. and it's so pleasant because there are a few people there there aren't a lot of screaming kids right right and um the water because of the heat that we've been having the water is oh. easily 80 plus degrees nice yeah it's, it's almost not refreshing but it's like right there right um, right and the sun has already gone down so you're not sweltering in the heat so it, it really is quite pleasant and um just a nice break for us to get out and get some exercise, which we really need for relaxing, if not for the health benefits. But, right, right. You know, well, good job, you. 
I'll get there one of these days. <laughs> it, it's been a hard push. It really has yeah. been a hard push. So, all right. Well, I'm sufficiently sweetened and stirred. Okay. I'm gonna give it a I nice. Am as, yeah, I am as well. The sage, or yeah, the sage really comes through on this. Mm -hmm. Not overpoweringly, but it's recognizable. Yeah, especially just like the smelling of it. Like when you smell the cup, it's mm -hmm. sage. It's good. I feel like it's got. Um, so I'm hit with the herb and then with the, the sweet. That's what I was gonna say. Is like the herb. Yeah, yeah. It can. It definitely tastes like herby in a good I, way. <laughs> I think it's a nice marriage. I don't think it's. I don't think it's bad. Um, there is. I know mm. the Republic of Tea puts out a. I don't know if it's blackberry. I think it's blueberry sage. I want to say. Oh, okay. And, um, and I've had that before, and I've never really detected the sage. So I want to say that I kind of yeah. like. If you're gonna mix an herb, I like it too. Yeah, I feel like that's a good what afternoon tea if you're having a stressful day. <laughs> I agree. I Bring out I the sage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my, uh, I'm not gonna call her my friend, but the afternoon tea lady, the afternoon afternoon tea London lady, the Irish woman, um, mm -hmm. Eileen Donahue, and she put a, a thing out there on Instagram the other day, and she said, um, "Does drinking hot tea in the summer cool you down?" What say you? I learned this only uh, in a random Canadian BNI meeting recently. <laughs> was that uh, I was told yes because there's someone who had like lived in Thailand forever and like they actually miss the humidity with the heat. Like in, in Canada, it was like randomly 100 degrees the day that I like virtually visited them. Um, but normally it's, you know, quite chilly. Nobody has air conditioning there. But so he was like, everyone was complaining about the heat, except he was like, I just wish there was more humidity. It was like, I've never heard anyone say that before. <laughs> like the phrase, I wish there was more humidity. He, yeah, loved it in Thailand. But he said to drink hot drinks. Yeah. And that that actually keeps you cooler. So is that, I know, is that what she said? Uh, she was just letting people comment. Oh, okay. I find that hard to believe because when you're out in the heat, you drink that cold water to cool your body. So how right. is water cooling your body? When I'm in the, what, what do I drink in the winter when I'm cold? I grab right. a cup of hot tea. So right. I, right. I don't know. I, that, to me, that's contradictory. I believe um, he said it was something like it, uh, I don't know, like calibrates, moderates, whatever your body temperature. Like, so it's not as much of a shock, I guess, when you are outside, like okay. if you're thinking, so I don't know if you're necessarily drinking hot tea like out in the sun, but if you're like in your home, maybe, or like at the you know restaurants or wherever they go. Right. Yeah, I'll have or to. It, or does it help you perspire, which helps the body to cool? I mean, that's. I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like he acted like it was a temperature regulation, <laughs> regulating thing. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> but I'll have to yeah ask him <laughs> to clarify. I really it. like this. I I like I like that herb with mm -hmm. the tea. I may, just, well, I may have found another use for the tea, for the sage in my backyard. <laughs> there you go. You can just put it in any of your teas. That's, That's right. awesome. That's right. Oh, I do like that though. It's good. I do too. I've never had anything with sage in it before. That's good. Mm -hmm. Come to my house. I'll cook you some chicken. Okay, great. Well, I guess I meant tea. I've never had any teas <laughs> with sage before, but I'll still come to your house and eat the chicken. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I will feed you. Um, so my parents went out to Arizona to visit friends mm -hmm. um, some years back. And I remember talking to them when they got back to Florida and they said, oh my God, you're going to, this is funny. Oh my gosh, we missed the humidity. And I was like, you did what? Right. When yeah. I go, I mean, and, and we get humid days here too. Don't get right. me wrong. We certainly but it's do, not consistent. But yeah. No, it's not. When we moved back from California to the East Coast and got, you know, and, and we flew to Florida and it was like, you get off the plane and outside and it's like, Pah! yeah, you know, right. it's like this sudden coat of moisture yes. on you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I don't usually miss humidity right. either. My hair doesn't miss the humidity. Right, I right. Humidity. That's great. Yeah, the guy who said he missed humidity, he was talking about how, you know, Florida is whatever percentage we usually are. I don't know, for like 70% humidity or whatever. But he was saying like the humidity he likes is up at like 90% humidity. And he said, it's like you're swimming in the air. <laughs> it's like a warm hug. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I was like, yep, yep, that's definitely a, yeah. It's that like an acquired taste. <laughs> yes, there you go. All right, speaking of acquired taste, should we go on to number two? Yes, so we peach rose. Peach rose. Okay. Smell the peaches. Loud yeah, clear. smell the peach right, right yeah. I think it's yummy. What's good, I was saying that's a good balance. It smells peachier than the taste. Like it doesn't taste right. like you're drinking straight up like peach juice or something. <laughs> Which I've had before. So I do like that you do get the tea notes through mm -hmm. the peach. Right. I think the rose is more of the perfume, the last finish mm -hmm. of, of the flavor that actually is processed through your nasal cavity. That's mm. where I'm getting the rose. Okay. And we see. Mm hmm yes very yes very astute observation <laughs> yeah thank you but yeah these are these are good so far okay. I think so did two, you did you say that one is green then green tea you know that? what if you give me one second I'll read the thing okay I will give you one second thank you oh, oh, <laughs> I'll allow it <laughs> I feel like I don't quite have my head in the game today. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, I should tell everyone that I didn't leave you hanging on purpose with a fascinator. I wanted to wear a fascinator. And it's adorable. And is it new, by the way? Is it what? New? Uh, no, it's actually one that when I had the mother-daughter tea like a couple Christmases ago. Yes, yes, yes. This, yes. Is, okay. this is the one I got for Piper. I had Very a different nice. red one. It's but, cute. Yeah, but so people notice my head disappears. And it actually doesn't have anything to do with the red background because I tried other colors. <laughs> it's just, yeah, no fascinator today. <laughs> you, you have a beautiful backdrop though, so you're good. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I felt like the queen needed to be sitting in a chair. And then when I happened to find a picture of like a throne room, I was like, oh, okay. Like I was just gonna put her on a couch in like a fancy room. <laughs> that, that's, that's pretty funny how she's sitting in the chair there. Poor, poor queen's been decapitated at the chest so that's true yeah it's the same as she was in my rocking chair <laughs> but she's in a nice scallop pattern so that's true <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness so this says first ingredient black tea so if it's going to be a flavored tea it's almost always salem so black tea green tea rose petals sunflower petals and natural flavors notice it says nothing about peaches weird that is weird. So when it says natural flavors, so there's something in the peach and those the quote unquote yeah, natural yeah. flavors. Interesting. So it is interesting. The uh, blackberry sage, black tea, sage, blackberry leaves, mm -hmm. cornflower, and mallow petals. Did you and I look that up once? Mallow, mallow petals? No. I feel like I looked at it. Mallow petals. Like that a marshmallow? Crazy. Yeah. Let's see. I'll find out what mallow <laughs> petals are. See, audience, we always give you education. <laughs> Straight from Google. <laughs> we'll do the Google searching for you. Uh, oh, they're pretty. Oh, they're, they're like lovely. Yeah, they're like purpley, and I guess so some of them are a little pink. This, this friends, this is a mallow. Yeah. The petals, and it's stunning. You know, I keep saying you and I ought to do. We, we ought to include um, screen share. With a lot oh, of, you're right. You know, I think we ought to um, to liven that up a little bit. So a right. mallow petal. Mallow is known to freely seed. Okay, whatever that is. So <laughs> mallow, a mallow is a flower. Okay. Interesting. So, all right. I Very learned nice. my something new for today. Yeah. Very nice. I can um, go to bed feeling accomplished. Yes. I would say <laughs> that was interesting. And you said sunflower petals? Sunflower pe yeah, uh, sunflower Honey, I took my glasses off. Don't do oh, that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we're, so sunflower petals in the peach rose. You see how closed my eyes have to be? <laughs> I look like I'm asleep. Um, and in the blackberry sage, it's cornflower and mallow petals. So those okay. are pretty colorful petals. Okay. I was just curious because I know some people with sunflower seed allergies, so I'm curious if they had sunflower petals, if that's a problem. Oh, that's, that's hmm, interesting, yeah. right, right. Okay. I'll serve them some and not tell them and then I'll wait and see. <laughs> just kidding. I, I have to tell you, 
doing tea parties, that is the most absolutely nerve wracking thing to me is somebody has a gluten allergy. Somebody's got a peanut allergy. Somebody's got a, okay. a whatever allergy. And, you know, I almost want to put in, and I, this, maybe I shouldn't be saying this out loud, but I almost want to put on there. If you have allergies, do not attend because, you know, tea parties are all about bread. Right. Right. They're about, right. you know, wheat, you know, there's wheat in the bread. Um, I can't say there's a lot of peanut in anything, but, um, right. it, it, it's, but it's yeah, still, it's like, part. it's so hard. It's like, I feel like you just have to be like, oh, it's made in a facility where there are, have been <laughs> like peanuts yeah. and whatever, like, uh, you know, how a lot of things say it's like, you know, this product doesn't necessarily have it, but it's been in like the same facility. So like okay. heads up. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a friend whose son is so allergic, you know, they, they, they go to restaurants and says it's gluten-free. Mm -hmm. but then three bites in and they have to take him to the hospital because it's so bad. And so it's either not gluten-free or they've used the same utensils or, you know, without wow. in between something like that. So it's, it's things like that, that, you know, or even just somebody was out shopping, mm -hmm. picked up a bug, came to my tea by that evening, they're not feeling well and they're right. calling food poisoning. Right, right. And, mm -hmm. you know, and it can't really be proven because food poisoning looks a lot like flu or what COVID could look like today. So, <laughs> right. but I'm the one who's going to get the pantsuit off of me. It's true. Well, yeah, but, but if it's only scared. one, but if it's only one person, if the whole tea party gets sick, <laughs> then maybe. Well, great. Now I have a whole new fear. <laughs> And my sign business, a waiver. <laughs> exactly. Everybody sign a liability form. Right, right, right. Um, you walk in the door. That's an idea. <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, people get food poisoning all the time from restaurants, and nobody gets sued. So <laughs> it's true, but yeah. And a lot of them go back to the same restaurants. I have Chipotle in mind. I have a friend that like always goes there. <laughs> Despite. I just want you to know I'm going to be off the grid for 48 hours after I right, eat this. Right, right. As I did not learn. Yeah. <laughs> and back, back when, I mean, this was quite a few years ago, but back when Chipotle kept having all the problems with like, what was it? Salmonella or something. Okay. I forget. Um, they, and they were like closed. I'm trying to think. Well, maybe they didn't close down, but it was like everyone was kind of freaked out and Chipotle has always got such a long line. And I was still married at the time. And my husband... <laughs> He was like, this is awesome. There's no lines. Like he was still eating there. No one else would just because. That is my oldest son's favorite place to eat. Really? Okay. He yeah. Bowling. He does. He does. It's always fine when I have it, but I'm not a huge, yeah. <laughs> I don't really care that much about it. <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I could get, yeah. There are many other things I'd pick first. So. Right. All right, tea, okay. tea number three, already a favorite of mine, cherry cherry fig, also known as figgy pudding. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. That was sweet. It smells so good. It does just smell so good. It smells That's like it. sweet, sweet Christmas. <laughs> Something. Mm. Never disappoints. Yep. It's so Never good. It's one of my favorite teas. Audience, if, if you're because you can taste, yeah, it's like yeah. the cherry and the fig. It's very, you get to taste both of them. It is amazing. I've never tasted anything like this before. Mm -hmm. And um, might, maybe maybe it's something you need to start carrying. By the I know, way, yeah. By the uh -huh. way, yes. I mentioned to you, so my the magazine that I get, the Tea Time. Yes. Um, that is totally your niche. And I think they need to oh. know about you. How do I get it? <laughs> I got to pitch him. No, I was just going to say, I'm happy to do the write-up for you. Hmm? Oh, you're, you're going to do a write-up for you. How do you do that? <laughs> I don't know. Contact them somehow. Yeah. And um, I'll blow I'll blow your horn instead of you having to do it. Well, that and, would be um, lovely. <laughs> I, 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 think there's, I think there's something in that because it's a different way of doing tea. And... Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think you and I ought to figure something out there. And yeah, uh, that's a good idea. Forward, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. they advertise Erica's Tea Room in Orlando all the time. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like a national, excuse me, it's a national magazine, right? It is a national magazine, but their writers go all over Europe. Right. Oh, okay. And yes. I mean, they 
they just did a thing back in May before even the, the countries, I don't know how they were doing it, but they had this tea schedule, they had some tea, they were going to go to like five different tea rooms in England or something oh, like that. Okay. So, I would like to get on the writing staff. <laughs> I oh, you're right. In Luxembourg, please. And that then would be so, in yeah. Paris. <laughs> so that would be, yeah, that would be very, yeah, that'd be perfect then if you do the write-up and then like, hey, we really like your writing. <laughs> I know, wouldn't that be great? That would be a yeah. long time. They'd sooner write about you than they'd take me on as staff, but um, yeah. That's awesome. Um, well, I'll just tell them you're in English. I think, we should, I think we should explore that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I was saying just tell them you're an English major. <laughs> well, I think that's why, you know, one of the re reasons I did the blog, because if, you know, if you put all those feelers out here. I am 50 years old trying to figure mm -hmm. out what I'm going to do when I grow up. And, yeah. um, and that the thing is, you know, people don't know your writing unless they can see your writing. So, um, so that's one of the things they start a blog of some kind. Right. So, um, you know, of course yeah. I was already passionate about this and, uh, and it just blended everything that I love to do. Mm -hmm. I get to wear hats and gloves and I get <laughs> to you and I get to try teas and talk teas and serve teas and all that stuff, so. everything tea time yes. <laughs> and I, British <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now I don't think drinking hot tea on a hot day <laughs> it's cool I turned my, yeah I turned my AC down and my blinds are closed but I was gonna show you um well you can finish your thought if you had the thought no I'm I'm finished I'm going back to blackberry sage okay so I carried teacups in my shop a while ago as part of like gift sets and stuff. I do remember. And <clears throat> I took them down because uh, they just, whatever, it was going a different direction. But so now I'm bringing them back, but I'm bringing them back as uh, like very, spe I guess, specific ones, like designs that I like and not just finding them out and about. So they're brand new cups and saucers. But so this one is like a periwinkle, if you can't see it very well. But look, it's they have pale blue. But is there a purple? Is there actually purple? It's purple. Tinted? Yeah, yeah. It's purple. Oh, but look, nice. they've got a little crown on the inside of them. Nice. Now, Isn't did you cute? design that and have that printed, or you just found these and and? No, well, I just found them and bought like a couple of sets of them, and then I'll put them in gift baskets individually. And then I got a dark green one because I thought I love. <laughs> I love now, and I love periwinkle, but I don't see periwinkle in that one. That dark green is right, gorgeous. right. Yeah, I know. It's like, yeah, you can't really see it. But mm -hmm. the, I was thinking, I was like, so that not everything's super girly, girly. The dark green is good for like men's gift baskets or whatever. True. Very uh, true. Yeah. for two. And I mean, obviously, it'd be good for Christmas. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, so I had to show you, yeah, the the cool little crown <laughs> crown teacup. Very, cool. very, very pretty. <laughs> All right, so which one do you keep going back to? I think you need to send me one so I can photograph it for you in my <laughs> light box. <laughs> Shoot. Uh-oh, I finally got a light box. <laughs> I know, but it doesn't mean I have a great camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can do it with your iPhone. You'd be fine. I know. Put, yeah. little stand. <laughs> Put it on the little stand. If you were going to rate them. Mm -hmm. We're going to rate okay. them and we're going to move on yeah, to talking about the Royals again. Okay, I need to add a little bit more sugar to the middle one to give it a, okay. a fair shake against the other two. And the middle one's the cherry, no, peach rose. Peach rose is number yes. two. I think, I'm really liking the sage because it's so different. Um, Obviously, the cherry fig, the figgy pudding, it's like, that one's always good, but I'll, I'll just claim that it's uh, my a Christmas favorite <laughs> so that I can pick sage. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I can appreciate it. I, I'm still gonna, if I have to go by flavor alone, it's definitely cherry fig for me, then the blackberry sage and the peach rose. I think yeah. the peach rose is maybe just a little too light for me. I like a- That's what it's, yeah, I feel like it's very, very tame. <laughs> It, it's to me it teeters on being a tisane tisane oh yeah tisane <laughs> who knows <laughs> like that just like scallop instead of scallop right, I know, right? <laughs> oh gosh okay so we had a friend over here two days ago it's so unfortunate I finally found it lives in the neighborhood they're both in the same grade 
Um, we haven't had much chance to socialize and we had her over, they're moving. As I speak, her house is being packed up. But little Elle was over here three days ago and they played so beautifully together, so, so well. Uh -huh. Love to play Barbies, love to do all that stuff. And the little girl is walking around with a fake British accent. Oh my gosh. She, I, I love talking with the British accent and I love playing dress up and everything. I'm like, I, I, I'm gonna eat you up right now with a spoon. <laughs> and she's moving. She's adorable, absolutely oh, adorable. But yeah. I just love, I'm like, what am I listening to? <laughs> That's hilarious. Television on? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so cute. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I'll hopefully, yeah, when Piper gets a little bit older, we'll, we'll try to get that, <laughs> get her to play with that accent. Yeah. You got to do it too. I know, yeah, I know. Amy, I was doing it. I'm trying to remember what we were doing the other day that I was using it a little bit. We were doing something silly, playing something, and I was doing like a character's voice, but um, so uh, funny Piper story. So I don't know if I've told you that Piper uh, is currently in the mode of everything is compared to what princesses do and don't do, say and don't say, and what like eat, don't eat, wear, don't, whatever. So it's like, everything is like, well, do princesses do that? And so, <laughs> but she has rules of what she already knows princesses do. So like, she got really upset that she had to take off her like dress up, like the plastic dress up shoes for school one day. So okay. These are my princess shoes. I was like, yeah, well, you can't wear those at school. I was like, you know, princesses can wear any kind of shoe. And she's like, this princess doesn't <laughs> like she's uh -oh. I'm, trying to, I'm trying to like empower her as a princess and be like yes exactly you you make the rules but she her rules she's limiting herself <laughs> so, <laughs> so um we learned she likes uh freeze-dried strawberries uh which she learned just by picking them out of like my cereal and then it was like, we had to pick through like a whole box of cereal. Luckily I found a bag of them on their own at yeah, Target. And when she was eating them yesterday in the car for the first time, cause I was like, look what I got at the store. She's eating them. And I said, you know what? I go, that's, I was like, that's astronaut food, like freeze dried stuff I was like, that's what the astronauts eat up in space. And she was like, really? And I go, yeah. And she goes, do princesses eat them? <laughs> so. I said, yeah, you go to outer space. Yeah. I said, yeah, princesses do. And then I said, do you want to be a princess uh, out in space? And she was like, so it's something kind of like, no, like my castle's here. I go, well, you can have more than one castle if you're a princess. I go, do you want one in space and one on earth? And she goes, yeah, both. <laughs> so now she's, now she's a space princess. That sounds awesome. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like, I suppose she's more accurate in saying that there are rules for a princess because the real royals do have rules. <laughs> they have absolute rules for just about everything. There was a funny, I was gonna put, try to pull this up. Um, I can't remember which news source, if it was a news source, um, <laughs> but it showed, it was, um, I think the headline was something along the lines of, I don't know if you've heard that um, Harry wants to have a um, little bit baptized at Windsor in the Windsor font. Oh, and, no. Didn't yeah, know and so it says basically is um that that is that will be up to Queen Elizabeth and the 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 pictures that they always pick for these things are so apropos like it right. was a little her looking Oh my gosh. Like it was so funny. It was like when did you snap that? It had nothing to do with this exactly, at all. Exactly, exactly. So so funny. So, so my question would be does anybody that's not a royal get to use that font? like or the when you know do they get to use use it or no okay well well let, let me ask you what is what is not a royal so they had um archie mm -hmm. baptized in it so okay. i think they just want to continue tradition because obviously he was baptized you know harry was baptized right. Archie said so why not little bit but if he's no longer a royal or working right. royal or if I, it's just harry now um right then you know so i i don't know that's that's yeah that's why i was wondering if it is open to the public or at least open to like the wealthy public or no you know, know something yeah. like that 
Wow. Like I because if other people get to use it, then I say that's fine. If it's strictly always been Royals, then we're it's getting a little dicey. <laughs> well, if it's if it's Windsor Castle, that's owned by the royal family. So I can't and, and it, you know St. George right. Chapel where he got married, I can't imagine that that's open to just anybody. I would think that's what I was gonna to say, do people attend regular services there? Like do they have I'm gonna say no. But I could, I mean, what do I know? But my guess would be no, because I, I, I think that is, that's a royal palace. That would be like, I want to get married in the St. John's Chapel at, uh, you know, what is it, Tower of London, please. Oh, okay. And, yeah, yeah, that's uh, true. I don't think you can. So, yeah, you're not supposed yeah. to take pictures in those places. You should have seen me. I was getting real creative with my camera. <laughs> that's like, hilarious. Oh, click. Oh, I don't know what this is going to look like. <laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I was trying to rebel. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, so Harry's back in the news. Okay, what's he done this time? You haven't heard. You haven't read. It's how, yeah, I mean, how recently? As what? of yesterday. Oh, okay. Nope. I know of. I've been in Piper World. <laughs> he, <laughs> totally get that. Um, so Harry is, he's having a book written. Um, Part of his $2 million deal, something with somebody or other. And it's going to be all about his trials and tribulations being born into the royal family. And it's supposed to be a tell all book and his side of the story. So um, I sign on to because I do. Mm -hmm. uh, royal, I always type in Google, Royal News Today UK. In fact, I've done it so much that it's always at the top of my list now. So if you go under Daily Mail, Every headline is about this book that Harry's putting out and it's not, it's not being received very well. Um, this is the final nail in Harry's coffin. Um, what tell all book? Prince Charles is all smiles, but he was never told about the $20 million deal. Huh. Um, uh, the uh, newscasters making fun of him saying, if he's just Harry, then why is he putting Prince Harry on the book? And huh. Um, so all this stuff. So yeah, um, Prince William and Kate Milton are on a public charm offensive to prove Prince Harry and Meghan Markle that they're happy and not trapped, exclaim royal experts. So uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> crazy. Not, they're generating a lot of money for the royal family. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. Yeah, I feel like so my first thought is like why rush to do all of these things now like he could do a tell-all book in like a couple of years or whatever and like revive their <laughs> you know their brand yes yeah like you have to do all of it right this second all at once Plus, and there will probably be more to tell in a year or two so i very mean true i, I, I think would just say don't rush on it i mean i'm sure everyone's like you know strike while the iron's hot type of I thing i think that that's part of it yeah. i i do think that's part of it um but if he really wants to mend things, yeah, is really the way to go. Right. So, it's like his, because Diana's book <laughs> didn't, didn't mend anything. So, <laughs> not really. But he wants to go, yeah, the route of his mother, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I don't know. I so think we'll it's bad, but yeah. I suppose we'll see. Yeah. Because what was the other book that just recently came out? I mean, within the last year or whatever, that was, was it like the whole, was it the whole Megan and I Harry? I think it's the Megan. My neighbor has that. She's like, let me know if you want to read it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know that I do. That's um, you know, like with anything, mm -hmm. um, false narratives run both ways. Right. And, right. Um, I, and I, I can tell you, I mean, they, people out there do not get their facts straight. They will write a story if it makes a good story. Mm -hmm. And I can only tell you this from a teeny tiny piece of experience when, um, uh, when Jackie at that, um, Toys for Tots event yeah. and she got to sit next oh, yeah. to Melania Trump mm -hmm. and the news stories claimed that my husband was an army commander, not Navy. Mm -hmm. They got the name of the base wrong. They said she was crying. There's this picture of Jackie crying. She was crying because she wanted to go home and play at the White House with Melania Trump. It's the sweetest thing. Oh. She's holding a picture that she colored and they're saying Melania Trump helped her color this picture. I'm like, you people got like nothing. Right, right. right. Story whatsoever, but it was a cute story. 
Right, right. So I was like, you know, um, you know. So now you've, yeah, you've lived it firsthand. <laughs> yeah, fake news runs they both make ways. the whole story for whatever yeah. picture they've got. The, the yeah. good, the bad, and the ugly. Right, right. So, so that's, yeah, that's interesting. I was going to say, I've been uh, doing well, some classes there. Called, it's called Landmark, uh, but I don't know if you've ever heard of it. But um, what's interesting, it's like I say, it's within the personal development realm, okay? It's a little bit more hands-on than like if you were to go to Tony Robbins. Um, but anyway, what one of the things I was going to say that uh, would dismiss like <laughs> all of their drama <laughs> is if if they were to go to landmark <laughs> and learn that there's what happened and then there's this story you tell about what happened and that means like the story you tell yourself too and all of a sudden th that story creeps in and becomes the truth so it's like you know um oh whatever it's like if you can say something just like, you know, it's like, well, I was, you know, I was married, uh, had a kid and got divorced or whatever, like facts. That's all that happened. It's like, but can I tell, can I fill in a whole lot <laughs> and add meaning to a whole lot of it that may not be there? <laughs> you there's your say. truth. There's, you know, what if, there's, you know, his story, her story and the truth. Right. Um, right. And what was that when, during the interview, the Oprah interview and Oprah said, that she asked Megan, she says, and that's your truth. Yeah, exactly. Well, then what's truth, you know? Well, that's what it is. Yeah, it's like, yeah, that's my truth, but that doesn't mean it's the truth. The truth, <laughs> exactly. But right. I also remember watching, and it's so, I'm going to go back to Oprah. This is so weird that this is popping into my head. Years ago, um, the, the Judd ladies, was it um, the mom, Winona Judd, not, oh. the, not the other, not, not the one who's the movie star, but I can't remember the mom's name. But anyway, they'd been in therapy together because they had such a strained relationship. Mm -hmm. And Oprah was interviewing them. And Winona said, she said, well, what we have learned is there is her truth, there is mm -hmm. my truth, and there is really what happened. So when she says that this is how things went down, she actually believes that that is how it happened. And I can yes. tell you in the arguments that Jose and I have had, I'm like, no, this is how yeah. you said it. You said it this way. He's like, I exactly. did not say it. Yes, that is exactly what, I saw the look on your face. I heard that from your voice. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't remember projecting it that way and vice versa. I'm not gonna right. go him the bus, but and vice versa. So yes, there is that to, to an extent, but then you have your Hilaria, what's her face, Baldwin. You know, Baldwin's, uh, Alec Baldwin's wife, who oh. wants so badly to be Spanish, she's been lying to everybody that she is. And that's her truth. So, yeah. well, yeah, and it makes it more complicated because whatever's happening behind closed doors that, like, for the royals, that is their personal truth or whatever, is getting interpreted by people that have nothing to do with it. <laughs> in the media. And just want a good story. And yes, and uh, also in Landmark, they call humans, we are meaning making machines. We make everything have a meaning, <laughs> whether it does or not. <laughs> and we all have our own meanings for things. So it's like, there's no like one <laughs> set meaning. <laughs> it's true. So it's like, what yeah. you bring to a conversation, what you bring to a relationship is all going to be what your experiences have been before, mm -hmm. your sensitivities to certain things based on those experiences. Yeah. I'm coming to the back. This is my past. It's back. It's back. Yeah. You see my past? <laughs> it's back there. <laughs> That's where it belongs. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, that's awesome. Hmm. But, um, oh, we needed to discuss still the article you posted in the oh Tea Time group. Did you read well, it? I, I read, I think I read it. It was kind of short, right? Or did I not read yeah, all no, of it? Yeah, no, it was short. It was very short. Because it was just saying that, like, what, Elton John claims he saw her slap a nephew or something yeah, a while ago? Yeah, nephew, she was telling him to go, do, the nephew to go do something, and he said no, and she said, yes, go and do it, and he said no again, and she said, you know, I am the queen of, and no, I don't think it was quite like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was, like, <laughs> a slap. Yeah. But then she slapped him, like, once or twice and said, you know, do you know, and then looked and realized, Elton John was watching her or something oh, like gosh. that. She smiled and winked like, this is just, we're just playing. You know, oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> so, you know, I don't. <laughs> She's a grandmother of a certain generation. Like, I feel like, what, I mean. 
Yeah. Or I guess a great, you know, a great aunt, whatever she is to the kid. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. It, it, I think it's more, I think it's, happening? yeah. What'd you say? Can you see that happening? Honestly, I can't, because I just would be surprised that she would be so hands-on. Like, I don't, I wouldn't expect her to be the grandmother who was disciplining them anyway, or asking them to go do something. Well, or the but, mom. She, I, I don't see her but, being the one. I mean, what do we know? I mean, truly, but that that's never been what has been portrayed as. Right, as, right. And then all of like what Charles's complaints and different things, like we've never heard that she's been like a slapper of children. <laughs> like, true, why true. would it start? <laughs> true. And you know, it was, it was acceptable, but you were, I, I still can't even say, think that that would ever have come out anyway, but I just really have a, I don't know, you know, Elton John is, he's Elton John and yeah. well, can see him fabricating um she you know maybe she's tapped him on the cheek i i don't i don't know i don't know what to believe i think it's right, an interesting right. story right it's very interesting. well that's true because it could have been what like <clears throat> it was something barely anything that he happened to reference someone grabbed onto it turned it into what it is which never happened but also um yeah it's like elton john he's been like just thinking, I guess, like, I don't know, practically or whatever. It's like, he's been so many places, seen so many people, like whatever. I mean, there's times where you just have wrong memories, you know, like it could totally be blending something else together and it wasn't ever, <laughs> yeah. it didn't ever happen. And what's funny is, you know how I don't mind that Harry airs his dirty laundry about his family. I do, <laughs> I do take what's offense. Coming? What's coming? I do take offense that Elton John were would say anything about it it's like you've been like he's knighted right like he's sir yeah. elton john right. it's like, uh like that's not a big deal keep your mouth shut yeah. <laughs> you're not family exactly <laughs> this and it traumatized it, you this is <laughs> gossip yeah. exactly <laughs> did he tell it as this this is a funny little story did he tell it as um right hey i think people ought to know what she's doing behind you know the curtain right right uh, well, that's true, because it could have just been like, let's see, he's, I mean, he's older now, too. So it's like, he's an older British guy, probably maybe thought it was a cute, funny story. Like she's quite, you know, still a granny or whatever. Right. And, and then it's like the Americans heard her like, oh, she slapped her kid. <laughs> yes. And then, and then there would be other cultures go, what's the big deal? What? Right, right. It's huh? Like, huh? Yeah, they're like, she didn't use the paddle. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So yeah. it's not not all that long ago that uh at least in Yorktown, Indiana, that they still paddled kids uh in school. They did that when I was I was still in elementary school when the principal was the only one who could do it. But right. like my mom tells stories that when she was teaching younger, it's like, yeah, the teachers were expected to paddle the students. <laughs> like that's just what you do. <laughs> you know. I see both sides of it because you you could end up going overboard, you know, yeah. and getting really hurt. But man, I, I don't think we had as many problems in the schools back then either when, yeah. when discipline was asserted. That's but true. you know, yeah. But I think for me, it feels now that I'm older, it feels weirder to put myself in the shoes of a teacher and be like, "Hey, these kids that like aren't yours, <laughs> like you're expected to hit them, <laughs> like." That seems yeah. weirder to me that it's like that's part of your job. And you're like, what? Like, yeah. Especially if it's like early on, it's like, I don't even know them. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I, so we just had some friends over on Saturday and um, we had oysters on the grill and, and steak. And oh, stuff nice. like that. We had such a nice time outside. So we're sitting outside and we're talking. And um, my good friend, Kristen, who they're waiting for their orders to England. They're supposed to be stationed out there for three oh. years to see if it comes through. Fingers oh, crossed. For yeah, me. yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but she, she, in fact, she's she's one of the first people outside. You know, she, she and one of the girls were the first people to come and meet Jackie after Jackie was born at the hospital because Jackie was held oh. in ICU for a week. Um, she is a special education teacher and her heart really is in that place. That's where she wants to be. Um, but she was talking about how when she was in another smaller, more Southern town, um, and she was in a school and 
one of the teachers got physical with one of the kids Ugh. and she went to the principal and said you can't you know what, what are we going to do with you right. know, this stuff whatever and he says I just don't think we need to do that. I'm sure everything is okay. And it was a very, it's not a big deal and <laughs> under the rug. And um, she said, so it still exists in some places. I, right. say, I grew up in a small Southern town in, in you know, Valdosta, Georgia. Right. And I went to Catholic school. Right. I never thought any of that. They didn't paddle us. They, they didn't paddle anybody, anybody, yeah. you know. Was it all girls? No. No, okay. Yeah. And no slaps on the hands or anything? No. Nope. Nope. Well, you got no, lucky. I will say, Sister Jane in sixth grade, man, that woman was a hag. And, you know, I, I don't, I wouldn't say that there's some, some of the nuns were very, they were very, they were pretty. They weren't always yeah. walking around in the habits. They were, you know, plain clothes nuns. And oh, okay. but Sister Jane, she was a plain clothes nun, but she was a hag. And, um, and she was very stern mm -hmm. and you did not want to mess with her. And unfortunately that was the year that Buck Zipperer, yes, these things are ingrained in my brain here. I love it. Zipperer was in there. Buck must have had a troubled background. When I look back yeah. now, I mean, he must have really, he was always <coughs> desperate for a negative attention. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she got mad at him so much. So at one point she had him by the shoulders and she was shaking him. And we we're talking sixth grade and she was a tall woman to begin yeah, with. Yeah. And I think she realized in the end, I think we were all kind of traumatized at the end. Right, we right. That we're all like, what uh, just happened? Right. <laughs> right. And you know, Buck, who was usually a real smart ass when something like that would take place, he was like traumatized by it too. So really? Okay. Yeah. So I that's the only yeah. thing I ever remember happening. And I went kindergarten two years all the way right. up to eighth grade. And they 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 didn't touch anybody. It was a wonderful right. experience, it was a great school, wonderful people. So right. Well, I guess you got lucky then because yeah. your, your town didn't do that. But I, I would say when when that was a possibility or an expectation, the paddling. Yeah. I think the kids that got paddled, honestly, I think they probably got paddled by every teacher. And it's like, it does, doesn't matter. All it does is maybe deter the people that would be like on the line or like on the fence of like acting out or not. Like, yeah. like, oh, I don't want to get paddled. But like the people that do, you know, I feel like, you know, the kids that are misbehaving, they'll be like, so what? <laughs> like, yeah. The other teacher did this yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's not shocking anymore. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, I think it was more, yeah, it worked more as like a deterrent, I guess, for, right. you know, for potential misbehaving. <laughs> not, not so great as, uh, yeah punishing yeah <laughs> imagine that the punishment didn't rehabilitate someone <laughs> <laughs> there must be a consequence to the action though yes yes <laughs> but so we saw cheryl's post the other day about the possibility of um traveling to the uk yes yeah i had a talk with her about that um we had a little one-to-one -one and yeah, we're looking at perhaps putting a group together to go. It would be next summer, probably. Like she said, at least a year out. Gotcha. Um, but before fall, essentially, we want to be there when Buckingham Palace does their tours. So she had to check and see how late in the season they do that, because that's only during the summer when the Queen is right. away. Right. And um, yeah, but so I we we're just kind of talking about like what things to do. And I was said that, you know, I kind of want a mix of obviously like the kind of the top spots to visit, but it would be cool if we could do something out in the countryside for a bit, okay, it's like Scotland or wherever. Yes, yes. And yes. yeah, but she had the fun idea of that the trip will end in Paris and we'll take the channel and go over there and uh end in paris and i don't know if it'll be like a day or whatever and then we'll fly home from there <laughs> so oh. yeah that, like, sounds that sounds like yeah that sounds like fun so uh more details to be yeah released as we as we figure them out but that would be yeah super super fun and we i think we're making it uh she said usually when kids are allowed it's usually like ages eight and up uh because i told her i was like yeah piper is i don't know like even if she's like 
pushing five. I don't know if I want to like yeah. drop it around. You might get as much out of that trip if you took her. And I hate to say exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, but it's true. Yeah, I said I would rather take her on like a solo trip, you know, where it's just us or whatever, one right. room, but right. not on someone else's schedule. So, yeah. uh, but I said, but other people is like, they can't necessarily get away from their kids for like 10 days, <laughs> like leave them behind. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but she said, yeah, typically people know not to bring kids under the age of eight anyway, because those kids like just kind of can't handle the the schedule, <laughs> you and, and know, the walking and the, you know, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, yeah, so, I want to watch a Cornwall, possibly even hmm. to Wales. Oh, um, yeah, yeah I so. think she acted like we'd be able to hit up, uh, yeah, like Wales and Scotland, so We'll see. It seems like a lot in 10 days. So we'll, we'll see yeah. what we get narrowed down. Get yourself some good walking shoes. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, my purchase, I got a rain hat that I did have to use once. And um, and I got some. Um, now, what's a rain hat? What is a rain hat? What does that look like? What is it? A rain hat? A rain hat. A hat, a hat you know, that's um, water. It like, like the fisherman? Hats? No, 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 it's not a garden. I'm not walking around looking <laughs> like a fish finger person. <laughs> <I'm fixing. laughs> no, in fact, maybe I'll wear it to tea one of these days, especially okay. if it's raining. It's just, this, it's a blue hat. It's really cool. It has a brim, yeah. but um, should it rain, it, it was actually collapsible. Oh, and, nice. Uh, it was the cutest thing, but when you, but when you popped it open, it, it just was this really cute hat. Um, I could run and get it for you and look, let you see it, but um, I did that and um, the uh, my Sperry's uh, water shoes basically. So oh, yeah. if we're walking around and if it were raining, I did right, not want right. my shoes and my socks being soaking wet. So um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 Say I don't. I'm trying to think. Oh yeah, last time I was there it was like winter time, so I had winter boots and stuff. But and I had one pair that was pretty waterproof because. Cause that's when we were staying out in the countryside and it's like everybody had their wellies you know like the tall rain boot things right, <laughs> I, right. I didn't have mine it's like those are the yeah apparently everyone has a pair over there because you're gonna muck around on the trails somewhere <laughs> yes, no, but man like i have a pair and they're not comfortable to walk in they're not the they think. they're heavy city they're heavy you can't bend the foot you know the natural right. bend of the foot you know right and it would rub on my ankle bone part of it and it was like yeah well whatever whatever kind the queen wears uh -huh. <laughs> maybe that's maybe that's the brand we get should those. go after get those. absolutely yeah. yeah so well oh i just noticed your tea towel i love it <laughs> oh yes yes can you see I, I can yes i can see hey right. historical london we got Big Ben over here and St. Paul's and Buckingham, the eye. Uh, did I say Big Ben? No, that's Admiral Nelson. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at the wrong, the wrong area here, yes. I've got um, Albert Hall and Tower of London and yep. Yeah, got a guide. Bridge and always the red telephone booth. Right. Oh, so. I know what you missed at tea time last week. Uh, <laughs> Trevor told us, so you know how the real London Bridge is actually like in Arizona somewhere, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and it was bought by some guy there. That guy thought he was buying Tower Bridge, and the London Bridge showed up. <laughs> he sees a moron. <laughs> you know, like, that's like the worst. Go yeah, that's like, that's like the worst, like, uh, I called it like, like an online shopping, like mishap when you buy the wrong thing. <laughs> exactly. This is not Amazon and you can return it for free. It's run into Kohl's. I need to return this bridge, please. <laughs> I know. But I was like, oh, what a bummer that would be. And it's like, well, you're stuck with it. Here's you're your bridge. What did he think he was doing buying a bridge? I, mean, I don't know. And I feel like, when did they look at, oh, shoot. I know Trevor looked it up and Googled to see when it happened. I feel like it happened in like the seventies or something. I want to say you're right. I do want yeah. to say, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so bizarre. <laughs> Such... <laughs> Ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, but so. so my summary, was... I, I was like, I'm sorry, go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to say that was one of the bizarre facts we learned <laughs> at tea time. 
Interesting. Trevor's always good for those things. Bring, bring, brings a little levity and education. To the group. Yep. Very good. Um, so I usually try to get a couple of good books to read in the summer. And there is a um, series of, um, they're called the Tea Mysteries, Teacup mm -hmm. Mysteries. So I'm oh, reading yeah. the first in a series called Death by Darjeeling. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And, um, well, I wish it were. And no, no, it's not good. <laughs> So if anybody out there is, you know, looking for, you know, Jose's like, why don't you branch out on the books that you read? And I'm like, this is my niche. This is what I like. You know, if it's not a something that's more, you know, resembles like a Downton Abbey kind of period, right. you know, then it, you know, it, it's something revolving around this. She just has a way of writing that's kind of like trying to show off what she knows about tea. So there will be like these sentences that go on about and, and Jackie's got my fire and it's my, my Amazon oh, fire, yeah. like, kind of thing. And it's, it's got the book on there, but the, some of the passages are like, okay, yes, I know this. I drink tea. I don't, you know, I, <laughs> so, so, so is it, is it a better read for someone who doesn't know anything about tea? <laughs> maybe, but I think to me, it's a little show offy rather than being entertaining well, I don't say it doesn't like does it assist the story in any way no, no that's no. Yeah. okay so it's it's technical to, okay put it this way it's not in it's not picturesque detail that helps you to envision right it's technical detail that comes off as show off I see I see so yeah. um so there is some of that you know and I'm like okay uh, you know I had friends like you that would talk like that and we're just not friends anymore so move on so <laughs> that's amazing do, do you have somebody like that in your life or have you had we, we call them no SME. I'm sure you call them what SME SME they are the subject matter expert a SME that's hilarious I've never heard that I like it no matter what you say no matter what you have done no matter what illness you have had yes. they have done it they have more of it they've had yes. it worse they've had it better so yes i call them one uppers <laughs> but <laughs> yeah you're that's right the same person this is sweet yeah what'd you say it stands for again subject matter expert subject matter expert that's great these people yes. are typically name droppers too like they'll you know throw a name in of a celebrity or somebody right. like they, like they are on first name basis with these yes. people. Um, you know, I've, I've witnessed these people try to one up their own spouse. And oh my gosh. Yeah. When the competition started. I, I didn't hear the, you know, the, the, the gun go off to say that. The right. Gun, so right. No, yeah. I do. Yes. I have known people like that. I'll say I probably don't, <laughs> I probably avoid them if I can. <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I really don't like it too when it's like you're trying to tell them something, I don't know, that like maybe you specifically know, mm -hmm. but then they try to, and the, and you can tell that they don't know more though. <laughs> They're just like, they have to top you in some way. It's like, all right, well, whatever. <laughs> yes, and yeah. annoying people. Very yeah, annoying like that's me. <laughs> yeah, that's me, the one-upper, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't mind yes. people who interject and always want to, you know, in um, uh, enhance the conversation or include. Oh, oh, I had that experience. You know, that's one thing. Right. It's always, yeah. If you're I did, blah, 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 and I yeah, did, if you're blah, participating blah, blah. and you're not just like yeah, stunting yes. the conversation. <laughs> yes. The point. It's like you go to and you go. Yeah, I'm not even going to try that because it doesn't matter what comes out of my mouth. You know, you're going to try yeah. to stop it, and and this conversation's already over. So. <laughs> I don't know how I brought that up, but I, <laughs> um, I don't. Oh, because of the lady in the book. Yeah, the author. I'm sorry. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the teacup mysteries. I have read a couple of books about you know teacup mysteries or or um, uh, tales centered around somebody who owns a tea room or wants to own a tea room stuff like that, and they've been pretty good. But I'll continue reading this and I'll give my synopsis at the end. Um, okay. The other thing is British television. When is Victoria coming back? I don't know, but I don't have, uh, yeah, I just figured it was because I don't have whatever, like the PBS app or something. I just figured I, they still don't, are, are they talking about? It is still not season? back. It is still not back. Um, I mean, and it's I been a couple of years. Today. It's been, 
I think it's been almost, is it only two? It feels like it's been three. three. Yeah. So I swear I brought this up today and I can't find it. The other thing is, um, for those of you listening, there are wide, vast worldwide audience. That's right. Who, um, who enjoy Doc Martin. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to ping Amy and tell Amy to get Acorn TV and binge watch the whole series. It's hilarious from start to finish. Um, it's a, what do they call it? It's a uh, dramedy. So oh, a dramedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's more comedy than drama. Um, right, right. I know I've given you bits and pieces, right. like when they go out on the first date and he doesn't know, he only knows how to relate to, to people medically. And, you know, she pulls him off in the bushes to kiss him. And he says, are you wearing perfume? And then likens her perfume to the smell of urine. Okay. And, you know, cause he doesn't know what else to do. Right, right. It, constantly shooting himself in the foot this way he just doesn't know how to be any other way um but it's been going on and off for Mm -hmm. I don't remember for almost 20 years almost 20 years and um they film in the same town Port Isaac they call it Port Wen in the in Mm -hmm. the series it's in Cornwall it's lovely um Mm -hmm. it'll make you want to go there and um the people come out all the time. They're very friendly with the people in the town. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sigourney Weaver is actually a good friend of one of the people in the series. So she made a guest appearance in two of the oh episodes. Oh my gosh, um, that's cool. I feel like well, that would be really wild if you lived in that town. Like someone's been filming there for 20 years. Like, yeah, and, and the town, I'm not gonna say it shuts down, but they have to shut some of those streets down. Did you yeah. ever watch Fisherman's Friends? Did you ever no. watch that? that one's out there too. That one I think you can find on Netflix. Okay. Um, and, and that's filmed in the very same town. It's in the okay. exact same town. Really? As Martin. Yes, Fisherman's Friends. It was a really, it was a cute tale. It wasn't high drama or anything, but it was, yeah. it, and it's a true story. It's, it's okay. a true story. So I would, I would totally watch that. Um, but uh, they are getting ready to film the final season. Um, they've decided that it's really kind of, as you can imagine, 20 years, the audience. Is, and it doesn't come out every year either. Oh, so it's okay. a couple of years between because Martin Clunes does all these other things. I mean, he's very mm-hmm. talented. So he does a lot of other things too. But um, anyway, they are going to film season 10, um, but not until 2022, which means that we probably won't get it oh, until geez. 2023. Right, and, right. Uh, it's a long time to wait, but- um, That is a long time to wait. I really, yeah. I really recommend it, Amy. You really should try to, to watch I it. Know. I know. Well, good. there's something else that I've been told that I really need to watch, which I do want to watch. I've seen previews of. It's called Ted Lasso. Have you heard of yes, Ted Lasso? we've heard yeah. of it. We haven't, we haven't yeah, tuned in. Because it's apparently only on Apple TV or whatever. And so you can do, yeah, you can do like the first three months or whatever and binge it. And then get okay. rid of it. But they're about to bring out the new season. And they're only going to release one episode a week, like as if it's an old TV show, so you can't binge it, which is nice for watching, but also that basically means that you have to stay subscribed. <laughs> to the, you have to what? What was that? You have to stay subscribed to Apple. Okay. So it's like, I mean, it's okay. like $5 a month, but basically they don't want people to be able to binge it all for $5 and then like leave their platform. Right. So, right. But I've heard that it's, really really great especially and that it's anglophile approved <laughs> so so i figure okay because i'm like yeah yeah because do you know the the story of it or you know a little bit it? yes because jose's friends have uh, have been talking about it as well and some of okay. my friends and uh and we've heard good things so we need to he and i we've been trying to get through cobra kai because my generation grew up with the karate kids so we oh, okay. that's great. cobra kai now we're waiting for season four so oh um we, there are not a lot of, I mean, you know, not a lot of shows that pull my husband and I together, but that's, 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 that's one of the one. So, yeah. That's awesome. But yeah, I love Jason Sudeikis and he's in it. And apparently it's just like amazing. And yeah, so I was, we had our first in-person BNI meeting last Wednesday and I was told, yeah, that I absolutely have to get on this. <laughs> so. If you can make connections through references of that show, then yes, definitely. Yes. I would definitely do that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. um, what Acorn TV is what it's like five six ninety nine maybe nine a month now. So yeah. I've been doing the um, uh, what's the other one? Um, Brit Britbox. Britbox. Thank you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I've been doing Britbox for a few months now, and um, I, it's time to switch. And that's why. And then I get off of that, and then I wait, and you know, right. things pick up for me in the fall, and um, and I won't have time to watch much TV. But 
Right, right. Um, so what's, what's another one that I, and there, I just read, it was the funniest thing that I introduced Jose to the show and they're years old now. And that night went on and looked and that very day, like hours before they had posted uh-huh. that they're getting ready to start a new season. So art lovers out there, if anybody's mm-hmm. out there who's a uh, big art appreciation, um, there's a show called um, Fake or Fortune. And um, if you've ever seen Antiques Roadshow, mm-hmm. uh, what's her, is it Fiona? I don't remember what her name is. I don't is. know their names, yeah, but I know. Yeah, you know. But it's a really fascinating process. So the UK has so many, and am I keeping you from any appointment, by the way? I want to make no, sure. No, no, we're fine. Yeah, we're fine for like another 10 okay. minutes. All right. <laughs> um, so the UK opened up a website to for people to post pictures of the art that they have if they have questions about it. Okay. Because as you probably know through watching old shows or reading books and whatnot, that back in the 15th, 16th, 17th century, 18th century, mm-hmm. they would, a lot of these people, the aristocracy, they would travel to Italy in most mm-hmm. cases um, to buy art, to live there for months, a couple years at a time. They would buy up the mm-hmm. art. You had your huge name artists, um, your Raphael's, um, your constables, things like that. And they would have their portraits painted as well. So oh, wow. they, they, they come back and they bring all this artwork back yeah. and hang them on the walls of these massive mansions, your Buckingham right. Palace is whatever. Right. And they're, past, and they're hanging there, 100 years go by, another 100 years go yeah. by. The descendants of you know whoever had his portrait painted or brought this painting in, mm-hmm. um, there may be a plaque on there that says, say, Raphael or... Oh something like that and they want to verify hey who is this buyer is this really authentic oh, okay so they th- it's amazing what these art detectives these um people that specialize in artwork mm-hmm. they don't just go they have to determine what's called the provenance like how did it get from that artist uh, okay to the person who knows it now right and right like one of the ones that we watched somebody found a sketch in a dump pile and it turns out that that sketch is worth uh, close to a million dollars or something oh, like geez. that. You know, yeah, yeah. It's, it's stuff like that. Or that bits and pieces have been painted over because they didn't like the way the artist did something. So when they've tried to have it authenticated hundreds yeah. of years later, they're like, no, this isn't a true whoever. But then right. when they, they can look at it through infrared now and go, these are layers of paint and I'm going to take this chip of paint. Oh, hey, guess what? This paint wasn't around at the time that the artist lived. So this is, you know, oh my gosh. it is amazing. And it is not sounds- boring at all. They yeah. really keep it going. And there is such an education behind yeah. it. And in the end, they take it to the absolute people who have the final say, yes, this yeah. is, or no, this isn't. And it either leaves you, yay, it was, yeah, yeah. or you've got to be kidding. What do you mean it's not? Um, <laughs> So, um, is that on BritBox? I, that's a good question. Um, I've been able to record it. Amy, I don't only just get PBS. We actually get another channel here called, um, it's a second, it's like a a shoot of PBS Uh called WETA UK. And the only shows they play are British shows. What? Yes. That's not fair. (laughs) Some of them have been running for the same damn six years. At the same time, I've seen them over and over again. (laughs) So, um, but every once in a while they're introduced. So I have like 12 of these episodes and I actually got Jose to sit down. I'm like, just watch one. If you don't like it, I won't force you to do it again. Yeah, yeah. Um, Or I'll watch wrestling with you, I swear. Just watch one with me. (laughs) That's awesome. But he loves it. He actually came home last night. He goes, we're going to watch the art show again? So oh he didn't actually clap his hands like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't <laughs> picture him doing I that. Do that. Like one of those clapping monkeys. Right, right. <laughs> I was just saying, as you're talking about that, I'm like, oh, like the painting that's in my palace behind me? Yes, precisely. <laughs> precisely like that. Who brought that back from whom, when, and how right. did it get there, and who owned it before, and all right. that. And have they messed with it? Yeah, that is so yeah. funny that people would paint over it and be like, ah, uh, I can fix this part. <laughs> yes. But let me fill this part in. I didn't like how this was done. And right. Um, like I said, it, 
I've always been right-brained. I've always been interested in mm -hmm. the arts, um, singing, dancing, all the playing the piano, all that stuff that I yeah. do. But um, it's really opened my eyes. I, we have the National Art Gallery here in DC. I've never been, and I was ready oh, really? to go, and then COVID shut everything down, and I'm so ready to go. I just want to, yeah. I mean, we have, you know, they bring in paintings from all over the world, and um, and I'd love to go and see it at some point. So that's is it open? Is it open back up? I believe it has. Okay. I believe it has. So that might be. Did I tell you I'm substitute teaching on the first day of school? No. <laughs> Why do you need a substitute teacher on the first day of school? The woman's son is getting married across country, so she's a friend of mine. So I'm like, yeah, I'll do it, but you better have an assistant in there who knows what she's doing. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, so I'm thinking on the second day of school. When the kids are back in, I'm right. getting on the metro, and that's what I'm doing. Awesome. Yeah. So what? When is the first day of school? So we start the 23rd of August. When okay. do you guys start? Do you know? When I have no idea what they do around here, but up north we always started in August. I never understood people who started after Labor Day. <laughs> like we Precisely. always started. That was yeah. that was a new experience when we first moved to Virginia and they would start after Labor Day. I loved it. I felt like this is what I've always heard about, you know, the yeah, summer right. day, you know, can't wear white anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, they've changed it in recent years. And it really, people around here get really mad because they they start us in school and then they give us a four day weekend for Labor Day. So mm -hmm. it's like, all right, get that it. No, whoa, well, slow down, hold on a second. Oh, let's right, start right. Weekend, you know, and it's- It's like, so, here's a taste of school and now you're gonna be excited about a break again. Yes, precisely. Now we're getting into it for the long haul. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's it, yeah, it, miserable. <laughs> it, it is, and, and it's still hot. Um, yes. But yeah, I know, I, I know it's been the way for it. And I think in Georgia, mm -hmm. they start like now, don't they start in like July I, now or something? I don't know what they do. I feel like it's gotten ridiculous in Indiana to where they start in like the first week or two of August. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. That'd be, yeah. July is just insane. It's like, that's clearly uh, still summer. <laughs> right. Right. But yeah, but because I was used to starting school in August. Um, I, my ex is like, we, he would always tease me because he's like, I said that fall started in August and he's like, no, fall starts in September. And I was like, yeah, but school starts in August. School is when fall is. So I, I base the seasons on the school calendar versus like the We're actual together. seasonal calendar. But, but tell me in Indiana, by the end of August, are you getting cooler breezes or not quite uh, yet? Not so much. I feel like September is where it starts to get like off and on. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. usually it's still pretty hot in August. Very I good. will want it to be cooler as like a kid or whatever because you get all your new school clothes and you should get fall school clothes. Right, right. <laughs> as it's fall in August. <laughs> that's right. And it's summer in February because that's when Target starts carrying bathing suits, right? Oh my gosh. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, that's, yeah. <laughs> I think you know I have um, oh, my degrees in fashion and yeah. I remember that when we were learning like the different seasons or whatever for fashion and that one that particular like January February that's called resort wear um, that's not called it's not spring or summer it's resort wear meaning all the people who are rich enough to go out on their like tropical vacations or cruises or whatever to get out of the winter that's yeah. who it's out for <laughs> so, uh, okay all right i okay that makes that's sense. the tradition of it i don't know what their yeah right. intent is now but it was called resort wear <laughs> that's funny well it's speaking of them so we still have our cruise to cash in on that we lost oh, yeah. COVID, lost but couldn't take and um so uh yeah that's so instead of being on here, I'm supposed to be on with, the, with <laughs> trying to figure this out, but we're actually looking at a cruise that starts the 18th of December and okay. stops back in port out of Tampa that comes back Christmas Eve. And then we'll be flying back Christmas Eve. So um, it will be very different. My two boys, you know, that they, they, they don't care. They'll yeah. find it. Um, if, if, uh, if I can bargain with Santa, yeah. And get Santa already without Santa going absolutely stir crazy, getting ready for a cruise and Christmas at the same time. Uh -huh. You know, then I then I think we'll be okay come Christmas. Well, maybe you need to have a talk with Santa and tell Santa that it's gonna be a little bit different, and you don't have to go all out. That's <laughs> that is precisely because what part I of it. Yeah, part I mean, of it I is the cruise. I've spoken 
living with Mrs. Claus and she keeps trying to convince Mr. Claus of that. And, um, and you know, I, I said, maybe, you know, Mrs. Claus and I agree that the teenage boys don't really need much and we can say, hey, you're getting a cruise. Right, right. Um, and, uh, and, and here's some socks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but Mr. Mr. Claus or Scrooge, I can't remember who I was talking to, was saying, <laughs> actually maybe, maybe Mrs. Hey. Claus or the Scrooge. And he said, you know, we were going to do the cruise anyway. There's no reason that oh, right. have to suffer. I'm like, yes, but well, they're so difficult to buy for. I don't know what to yeah, do. Yeah, I was gonna say, I just, yeah. I, say, I mean, I guess, yeah, gifts are one thing, but it's just, you know, I hope that, uh, yeah, that the clauses don't, yeah, don't make you crazy with like cooking <laughs> and everything else. Like, you get to like rest and recover aside from opening gifts. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know, and if people want to come and see us for New Year's, they may do that. Right, um, right. But uh, yeah, it's it's the only time Stephen's going to be home. The oldest one's going to be home, uh, and and where we'll all be together without right. losing this cruise altogether. So um, right, right. So, but um, you know, we'll have had a couple months of cold weather at that point, so it'll be nice to get. Oh, into that's this true. Thing, so that'll be good yeah and just a just a thought for the boys uh what if you let them pick like I don't know what there is to buy on a cruise but I'm assuming there'll be stuff to buy like what if some of their presents come from like they pick them out or you can tell what they like and you sneak and buy it that kind of absolutely, thing absolutely absolutely we can do that and um <laughs> yeah no, I'm sorry. I just blanked. Santa, and then Santa, like, Santa is, can... is my oldest son going to be 20 or 21 this year? And I can't remember. <laughs> Welcome to old age, well, ladies. Great. Yeah, I was like, well, I guess, are they going to be drinking or not drinking? I know. <laughs> I I see, see, I'm like, oh, he might be drinking on this cruise. I don't know. Um, <laughs> not in front of mom. Um, <laughs> have something fruity, dear. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> So, yeah. Anyway, so so that's what we're doing. And as for me and, and Cup and Crown, just to talk business real quick before that, yeah, yeah I think please. we kind of put things on hold um, for the time being. Um, okay. We just have a lot of stuff going on. So my, my brother even texted me and said, I haven't seen you on, um, on you know, social media. Right. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, just have had other things to do, you know, right. family wise, whatever, and trying to reorganize in my head where Cup and Crown is going and, and what it needs to focus on. So right. um, get that thing out of the can't, can't, can't ever get that, can't oh, really yeah. have a ring. So I know. And now I can't see anything. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I haven't been around doing that stuff, but we, we've been okay. busy with other things. So right. Good. Well, so, you might be able to, yeah, you might be able to pick up in the fall or just, you know, see what you feel like doing. Cause do you have anything on the books? Because I know you had a bunch. Um, I had a potential beginning. Girl Scout tea that was supposed to have been done in July. They just waited too long to be able to gather the troop. And I'm like, in mid July, everybody's on vacation. Oh, so right. To do. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they say, can we do it in the fall? I'm like, absolutely. But give me a you know a couple weeks heads up. Right. Um, I my neighbor across the street, she has already put something on the calendar for October 14th. You know, okay. no deposit or anything like that. So she and I will still be talking. Right. Um, it's the it's the tea party the making and you and I've had this conversation before about mm -hmm. having to make the sandwiches and being on the spot for the food. Um, right. You know, we wanted to do it for the tea party part of it, but not have to be a caterer. And um, and how can I revamp that? I don't want to turn that off completely. Right. Um, I'd still like to market something for Girl Scouts because there is a real niche there. Yeah, um, yeah. But. Uh, you know, the whole bridal thing, everybody comes to me and says, you know, I get the, mm. where's your venue? I'm not a venue. Right, right. Yeah. So, I'm not, yeah. And what about uh, like in the fall? Um, oh, like the boxes and stuff you're doing for like everyone in the schools, you can do yeah. those. Do you want to do those again? I don't mind doing that again. I actually okay. had a lot of fun doing that. Um, I, I, you know, pretty, pretty successful. Right. Yeah, it, it was pretty good. Um, so I don't mind doing something like that again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so we'll see. I was even thinking of, you know, since, I mean, there were some that were shipped. I still go back to, it's nice to put a teacup in there. But like you said, when you ship them, you've got to have some real good special packaging to make yeah. sure it gets clobbered. Mm -hmm. So um, I could say local delivery only, but about half of my sales were shipped to somebody. Really? Else. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, yeah, it is possible to uh, ship a teacup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I've kind of found... Uh, 
like thicker tissue paper kind of is the best thing to wrap it up in almost like as if you're wrapping dishes to like pack up and move yeah. or whatever yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I usually put like a prettier tissue paper around the outside of it Sounds good. <laughs> so, Sounds good. yeah that makes sense yeah 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 but um yeah so I think yeah well I guess uh that's our concludes our tasting because yeah. <laughs> I have a more toss than taste more toss than tea but it's all good yeah. Yes, okay. I have a doctor's appointment, a chiropractor, Dr. Bob, shout out to Dr. Bob, <laughs> Rosenberg Chiropractic. <laughs> and I, I yeah, yeah. So I'm going to go get, now that I, let's see, I Piper, I only had Piper like the last two days and it was like the very first night I was like, oh my God, my back. <laughs> like, I don't know what she does to me. Do you but pick her up a lot still? That's true. Yes. She makes me, she has me carry her a lot. Gotcha. And sometimes it's up and down three flights of stairs. So, <laughs> wow. Yep. I, While I'm I, carrying I, other stuff. <laughs> when, when you carry the child and you carry uh -huh. them on this side so that you could be right handed or left handed, yep. whatever it is you're doing. She's always and on I my left having, side. Yeah. So, when I, when she's about two years old and she would go to physical therapy because of her disability, I started mm -hmm. going to somebody in the same facility. She said, stand in front of a mirror and just stand. Yeah. And I did. And this side of my body was touching my arm and there was this much space between this. And I had, my body had shifted and my hips had done this number. Uh -huh. so yep. I became very aware of that and started, you know, she gave me exercise to try to push that way. So. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. It is. It is crazy. I'm always curious when I go and I'm always like, okay, which was like, which part had the craziest reading this time? <laughs> like, tell me. What do you mean? Who had Cause like he has like a, it's like a computer thing, but it's like a two prong thing. It like goes all the way down your spine and okay. it like beeps and it reads okay. it. And then it tells like, basically then he switches it to where it does little pushes for like the adjustment part. Okay. So a lot of times it is my lower back. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's like, you really has to square off my hips. <laughs> like you said, right. <laughs> so, we, we've mangled ourselves without knowing, yes, you know, yes. to, to function. Yes. Yep. So, so it's well, uh, interesting. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's, it's just regular routine. <laughs> so it'll be good. So, will you, will you feature a new room the next time I see you? Another room? Maybe. Yeah. We'll see if I get tired of this room. I really, yeah, I really want to find more palace rooms, uh, that are like free stock photos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or yeah. the gardens. The gardens. Yeah, are that's true. Oh, you're right. I could do the gardens. Yeah. yeah. I was like, really, if I would look through my own pictures, I'm sure I have great <laughs> pictures from over there <laughs> that, yeah. that I own <laughs> the rights to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's the truth. I know. All right, girl. Yeah. Well, thank you for the talk. Okay. Thank you for listening. Absolutely. Thank you for picking out the teas, and they were delicious. And then until, until next month, <laughs> you let me know when you're available, shoot me some dates. Yes. And also when you have a minute, I need you to send me the recording from two months ago when it was on your computer. Cause I haven't uploaded last two months of our videos. Okay. So like, this will be number three. So I need to get all three up onto YouTube. <laughs> okay. But Sounds you good. have the one. <laughs> so that you said from two months ago, So you'd be May. That was May. Yes, yeah. you're right. Okay. Yeah. So if you gotcha. can find the recording of May, that's the one we need. <laughs> All right. I will see if I can find that for you. <laughs> All right, honey. All right. Well, thanks everyone for watching. This has yeah, been you yeah, your monthly tea tasting with your two favorite tea ladies, Lady Nancy of Cup and Crown and Lady Amy of Houses of Windsor. <laughs> All right. Take cheers. Care. Bye. <laughs>